Hey guys, what is going on? This is Travis P. Love and I'd like to welcome you back to the channel. And today we're going to do a basic, oh, breakdown and cleaning of the JTS M12 AK, uh, AK pattern 12 gauge shotgun. Now, this is one of those guns that I highly recommend that you clean before you go to the range. You may be one of those people that does not clean your gun before you go to the range. You just believe right out of the box it should be good to go. Well, I'll tell you what, when I took this thing out of the box, it had some dry, crusty, cracked, greased residue inside the rails and also on the bolt carrier group. And it is brand new, by the way. And also the regulator up here in the front, they use some sort of a machining oil to prevent it from rusting while it's being manufactured and in storage. I've been told that that stuff can almost turn into like cosmine. It can get all hard and gooey when it gets hot. And that can prevent you from being able to turn the knob to turn the knob to adjust the dial on your gas regulator. So we're going to take you through this whole process of cleaning it. Now, if you are uh, somebody who is familiar with the AK platform, a lot of this is going to feel uh, familiar to you. But I'm going to basically cater this one to the beginners. We're going to go through everything step by step and show you exactly what you need to do. Now, please understand, everybody kind of has their own methods of cleaning and the products that they like to use. So I might be showing you something that you never use, but we're going to go through all this stuff here in just a moment. And we will go ahead and get started cleaning the JTS M12 AK 12 gauge shotgun. All right, hang tight. Okay, so obviously safety is going to come first before we clean any firearm. If you happen to notice a magazine in the magazine well of the firearm, press your paddle right here and you can remove the magazine. Okay, so you can see there's ammunition in the magazine. We want to definitely treat the firearm like it's loaded all the time. Let's check the chamber, make sure it's empty. Pull back, verify. It is in fact empty. Now on this gun, you can pull back and you can lock open by pressing up on the safety lever, but we're gonna need the safety lever down and bolt closed before we start the cleaning procedure. All right, let's go ahead and move on. Okay, so let's talk about what you're gonna need for cleaning supplies. Now everything you see here is maybe a little bit more than what you really need to maintain an AK pattern firearm, but in my experience, this is what I recommend. So when it comes to lubrication, you know, you can use like Safari Land CLP, Break Free CLP, Cleanse oil is definitely a favorite. Um, I do have a little needle oiler that has a fine tip for getting oil in, in tight crevices, hard to reach places. Uh, you guys can argue this one back and forth in the comments if you want to, but I've always used a multi-duty complex high temperature grease or a white lithium grease on the bolt carrier group and the rails. You don't have to goop it on there, it's just gonna provide a basic level of lubrication for a lot of metal on, con metal, on metal contact surfaces. Definitely comes in handy. Punch set, I highly recommend it, especially if the gun is new. This There's a lot of parts that are very tight right out of the box, and you may be unable to simply move them, so the punch set will definitely help out. I also have a 12-gauge cleaning kit that I use. Um, it does have a 12-gauge bore mop and a bristle brush. This really comes in handy to really scrub out that bore, depending on how dirty it is. Um, also, the Hoppy's 9 solvent that comes with this kit is wonderful. You know, these are about 10 bucks, 15 bucks. They really will save you a lot of time. I don't believe the mop is included. Those run about a dollar at most of your sporting goods stores, so maybe pick one of those up if you have a chance. Uh, this, there's a screwdriver that comes along with the firearm. You're going to want that when we have to disassemble the gas regulator. There's also the choke tube key because this does have removable chokes, and you'll find that in the box. Uh, if you don't have one, you can get a universal choke key that's set up for multiple gauges. You'd need a 12-gauge choke key to get you going. Rubber band. We'll explain later why. Uh, cleaning brush. Now you can use an old soft toothbrush if you want to. Um, otherwise, I get these just in the cleaning section of the firearm store. They're just a couple bucks a piece. A uh, single plastic cleaning rod is really nice to have for certain parts, like cleaning out the inside of the piston and so on. And uh, it'll just make things a little bit easier for you. Obviously, some pair of rubber gloves or nitrile gloves to keep the carbon and all the muck off our hands, keep our hands nice and clean. A uh, little bit safer way to do it. For a hammer, you can use a ball peen hammer. I'm just going to use a standard hammer. There's basically one or two small taps that we're going to use on the firearm, and it's not really going to hurt anything. If you got brass punches, those are probably better. Ball peen hammer is going to be better, but for what we're doing, it's going to be totally cool. All right. Now, when it comes to uh, Q-tips, I like the Tipton Power Swabs. They're a little bit longer. Uh, they don't break as easily as just a standard Q-tip will or cotton swab will. Uh, these are nice to have to get into some of those hard-to-reach areas also. Now, it comes to cleaning patches. You can cut up an old cotton t-shirt if you want to. These are just ones I get at Shields. They're like 10 bucks a pack. These last me many, many cleaning videos. Uh, they definitely come in handy. So, really, that's pretty much about it. Got a little mat here from Cleanse Oil to pick up all the debris and the garbage. So, we're going to get this out of the way, and we will go ahead and get started. If I forget anything along the way, I'll let you know. And again, if you don't have this grease, you know, it's not the end of the world. You can simply put some CLP on the trunnion, on the bolt carrier group, on the rails. You're going to be okay. But again, I just kind of go along with what I'd say the experts recommend, which is uh, either a white lithium grease or the multi-duty complex grease. Advantage of this over your white lithium grease is that this does not get hard and crusty and crack over time and dry out. This stuff does maintain its consistency um, across the board in a variety of temperature ranges over a 
fairly long length of time. So this is what I've been using in my AK pattern rifles for years. All right, let's go ahead and get started. All right, so the first step that I highly recommend is you take either your regular oil can or your needle oiler, put a single drop of oil right here where this button is, and this button is essentially used to help ensure that your um, recoil spring doesn't get pushed forward, that the, that the guide rod doesn't get pushed forward. It's just a little extra layer of security, but from the factory, this button is very stiff and very gritty, so press it down a couple times. That'll definitely help reduce the effort it's going to take to get that button pressed down while you push in. Okay, now the next thing you want to do is push down on the button and you're going to push on the rear and this is going to allow you to open up the dust cover. So go ahead and give that a push forward and the cover is going to pop up. Be very, very careful because there are sharp edges all around this dust cover and also the flaps that cover this ejection port. They're super sharp too. So gloves definitely are going to help out. All right, let's go and get that open. Okay, so as you can see, I went ahead and used a punch to push it in. That's just because it is really hard just to press. Now, this does have a spring hinge on it, so open, open that up, and we'll move on to our next step. All right, so press forward and then pull back, and your recoil spring system, guide rod system, is going to come out. And go ahead and just set that off to the side. You can kind of take a look inside and see what's all in there. You've got your rails. Now, if this is the first time you're cleaning it, this is going to be very, very dry inside. In fact, the manual even recommends that you cover every metal surface with some sort of lubrication to prevent corrosion. It's one of the few times I've seen that in a manual where they highly recommend that you wipe it down and after a few months, wipe it down again. So I don't know if it's because they use a thin coating in the gun, but either way, we got your guide rod off to the side. Okay, let's go ahead and clean off the uh, flap and the guide rod system and we'll go on. Okay, so you're going to be saying this a million times, drop oil on a patch, wipe off the cover, be careful, it has very sharp edges, but make sure you wipe everything down. You don't have to remove this flap, it's okay, <clears throat> and then just go ahead and wipe off the spring. Now, this gun has been cleaned once already. When I took it apart and saw how dry it was and how, you know, it definitely was in need of some lubrication, I didn't wait, I went ahead and just wiped it off. So this may not show you the true amount of carbon or crud that's going to come off the gun the first time, but basically when your patch is wiped clean, that is essentially what you need to know that the gun is all set and clean and ready to go. Okay, go ahead and set that off to the side. I'm only going to say it once. Any excess oil that seems like a bit more than just a light coat, you can wipe it off with a dry patch, but just make sure there's something there. Okay, we'll go ahead and set that off to the side and we'll move on. Now, just so you know, guys, in general, um, I tend to use uh, cleanse oil on all the firearms. On the AK, I like something a little bit thicker, something more like a grease or like an oil. So with the flap up, we're going to go ahead and wipe out the inside of the cover. You want to watch out because it has very sharp edges, so be very careful around it. Uh, mine has been cleaned off once already, and it still has a light red oxidation that comes off on it, so it's still dirty. But again, just a drop of oil on the patch, and that should be about all you need. Go and wipe out all the different surfaces. It does have a spring on it, so it will stay up on its own, more or less. Uh, it just kind of depends on how you keep it, but uh, at least it'll be out of the way. All right, let's go ahead and remove the bolt carrier group. Okay, when you remove the bolt carrier group, the hammer is going to need to be pressed under a little bit of pressure in order to get it to come out. Also, make note of what the bolt carrier group looks like when it comes out, because that's exactly what it's going to take to reassemble it. It can be frustrating, especially if it's a first AK trying to get everything to set back in the tracks. But trust me, it's not that difficult. Once you go through it a couple times, you're going to be set. So just press down and pull back, and your bolt carrier group and your piston will come right out. And we'll take a closer look at these here in just a moment. All right, so please note how everything basically came out of the firearm. We'll go ahead and flip it around. Okay, this is essentially how we're going to have to reassemble it. You've got a little peg right here, and there's a channel up there. When you put the gun back together, you want to make sure that the gun is basically flat like this, and then as you cycle it, this part will lock itself back into place, and you're all set to go. We can go ahead and pull out the bolt in the carrier, so let's do so. So pull back on this little... I just rotate it basically clockwise until the little uh, peg comes out of the hole and pull on it and go ahead and set the piston off to the side and let's go ahead and start cleaning off the bolt carrier group. Now at this point you can take your brush and you can go ahead and scrub everything down if you want to. Um, I'm going to wipe this off with a patch that has a single drop of oil on it and then I'm going to show you, well we're going to apply the grease a little bit later on before we reassemble it. I don't want to sit it down and get grease all over the place but we'll show you essentially where the grease is going to go. Now, on a few of the videos that I watched on this firearm, there were people that said that they coated it with oil and it just absorbed all the oil and it was basically dry like a couple hours later the next day. Uh, this is basically two coats in and it's just now starting to finally not absorb that oil. It's just a weird, porous metal that they're using. So just go ahead and wipe everything off. Now, we're not going to pull this apart. It's not necessary according to the manual. It does require you having to punch out some pins and springs and they say only do it if the gun is having issues with no primer strikes or you notice that there's debris clogging it up and you've got to disassemble it. 
they don't actually tell you how to do it. And so because it's not, you're not told to do so from the manual, um, I'm not gonna do so either. So let's just go ahead and wipe it off, single drop of oil on a patch. Uh, make sure you get your extractor nice and clean right up here. And it is very, very uh, easy to do, okay? Very simple. When we do apply the grease, just to let you know, you're essentially gonna be applying the grease on the contact metal to metal surfaces. You'll have a little dab of grease right here, a little bit on the sides, a little bit on the sides up here, and then just a little tiny bit on the stem back here. You can see where there's metal on metal contact, and this is just from cycling the gun. So the more you shoot it, the more you're gonna notice that wear and that metal starting to come through. Those are the surfaces where you wanna make sure that you have grease, or at least at a minimum, some sort of a lubricant, okay? All right, let's go ahead and set the bolt carrier group off to the side, and we'll move on to the piston. Now to clean off your piston, it's very simple. Drop oil on a patch and go ahead and just wipe it off. No surprises, very easy. Uh, again, you might be surprised with how much crud comes off of it. Now, because you're gonna have metal on metal contact, that grease is gonna transfer from the bolt carrier group to the carrier. So I don't really recommend putting much grease on the inside of here, if any at all. I would recommend putting just a little bit right here on the sides. And as you cycle it a couple times, you're gonna see that grease start to go on the rail naturally. Some people like to take a swab of grease and drag it down the inside rails of the receiver. I'm not gonna do that on that one because I'm just gonna see how this does when I cycle it a few times and see if it puts grease where I need it, okay? So simply wipe this off with a patch and you should be all good to go. The key about these AK pattern shotguns, not a lot of maintenance required, but the first time you get them, you definitely wanna make sure that you are getting them set up the right way. Now, take your single cleaning rod, whether it's a brass cleaning rod or a plastic one, and put a drop of oil on a patch. Again, I can't emphasize enough because people always yell at me saying I over lubricate the guns, but hey, you know what, you do you. This is my video, you don't like it, thumbs down, it's all good. All right, put a patch in there. Let's make sure everything's on camera for you. All right, now go ahead and clean out this little cavity in here with your single patch just to make sure there's nothing in there, okay? It's, May or may not be dirty, mine was pretty filthy. You can see that's a clean patch and it still had a little bit of crud that came out on it. There you go. There's probably better ways to do it. Feel free to chime in guys. If you do something different, you go right ahead. You know, everybody cleans their guns differently and that's totally cool. All right, so we're just gonna set the piston off to the side and we will go ahead and move on. All right, now at this point, this is where the rubber band comes into play. This thing will drive you nuts and it's dangerous having all these sharp edges over here as we're taking out the gas block system and the hand guard and so on. Pull down on it. Well, let's get the rubber band over it first. Nice thick rubber band will definitely help out, plus it'll stretch as far as it needs to. Pull down on the cover, okay? And then go ahead, whoo, <laughs> sorry about that. And uh, just let the rubber band go, and that will keep the cover just kind of more or less secure, so it's gonna be out of the way while we are doing our work. Good, hopefully you guys got to see that. Just pull the rubber band over the back. You can double it up if you want to, or use a tighter one. Just anything to keep it from going up while we're working up on the front. All right, let's go ahead and get that uh, hand guard out, and we'll go from there. Okay, now this next part is probably gonna do some, some cringiness on people watching it because they're gonna say it's maybe not the way it's supposed to be done, but this little lever here that you need in order to take out your gas cover or your gas tube, this thing was so tight, I could not just push it. I still can't just push it using my hands. So what we're going to do is we're going to take your punch, and if you want, you can put a patch in front of it if you need to. I'm gonna leave that up to you. Make sure that the gun is in a stable location. All we have to do is basically get this little lever right here to pop out of the dimple and we're gonna pull up and that's gonna allow us to remove the gas tube. So all I did was take a punch and just tap it a couple times and that's it. We're not going crazy, we're not messing anything up. At this point, it's gonna be able to be moved up between 45 and 90 degrees, allowing us to remove the gas tube. All right, let's go on to the next step. Now, you're gonna have to get this just absolutely perfect in order to pull this, pull this cover off the top here, this hand guard and this gas tube. And you can look down from the top, and if you can see basically straight through back here, you can see down, you can see basically the back of the gas tube. You know that you have it where you need it. It's gonna be, there's gonna be some metal here, and if you can't pull up on it, you're just gonna have to adjust this till you get to the point that this is gonna pop out. So that essentially is what we're gonna do right now. I'm gonna put a little headlamp on so I can see down there, so I'm not wasting our time trying to figure out where exactly the back of the gas tube is and the little piece that's going to keep it in place. Okay, so this might wash out the video a little bit. I'm pushing back on it so that I can see the rear. Hopefully, I was hoping this thing would loosen up a little bit. Okay, there we go, all right. So I can see a little space here between the metal and the back of the tube, and you guys should be able to see the same if you're doing this in real time with me, and you should be able to pull up on it to get this tube to come out, all right? So I'm gonna fiddle with this a little bit until I get it out, but it will basically come right out like that. I had a heck of a time with it the first time, I don't know why. All right, let's go ahead and move on and clean out this gas tube. 
All right, let's go ahead and just run a patch with some oil through the back of the gas tube, go ahead and scrub it out. Now again, this has never been fired before, so it's not gonna be super dirty, but there's still some stuff coming off of it. And I've already cleaned it a couple times, so get in there and really scrub. You can do this a couple times if you want to until the patches come out clean, that's totally gonna be up to you. Let's see how it looks, look at that. Yeah, and this has been cleaned twice already. Now I'll go ahead and take that patch and just wipe out the inside of it. If you wanna do another patch, you're more than welcome to, depending on how much time you guys have. We'll wipe off the outside of it when we're all done. Just go ahead and wipe off the bottom here. There you go. All right, let's just go ahead and set that off to the side. Okay, have a patch or two with some oil on it on standby. Uh, go ahead and get your choke key in there and turn. This did not take a lot of effort to loosen the gas tube. It's just gonna unscrew, not the gas tube, I'm sorry, the choke tube. It's just gonna unscrew and then you can just keep going and eventually it's gonna come out. Now I like to do this before I clean the barrel. It's just me because I wanted to get all the crud off of it. So go ahead and wipe off that uh, choke tube. You don't have to worry about the inside of it because we're gonna clean it out when we clean out the barrel. Mine was pretty dirty. It actually had like a heavy oil on it. It was a little bit more resistance to turn. And then inside these threads in here, just take your patch and go ahead and just use your finger. Just wipe out the inside, get those patches. They need a little bit of oil on them so that they don't lock up on you and you are gonna be all set to go. Hopefully that showed up okay in the video. All right, let's go ahead and screw that, cho or cho uh, screw that choke tube back in. This is why you don't film videos early in the morning, guys. I'm still waking up on the weekends here. All right, go ahead and tighten it up. You don't have to over tighten it, just make sure it's snug. The tighter you do this, the more you're gonna wear out these little lugs and it can be difficult to get those choke tubes out over time. Just make sure it's snug and that's basically gonna be about it, all right? Let's go and tighten that up. All right, so we got the rubber band off. We've got the barrel basically ready to go. We've got our favorite uh, Hoppy's Number no. 9 gun bore cleaner. Put this in here. Now this is gonna be messy, and be careful what you get it on because it's gonna remove the lubrication from whatever it comes in contact with. Okay, there we go. We're gonna run this from the back to the front. Go ahead and get it in there. You can kind of turn it around a little bit, really get that chamber clean. Now this does have a chrome line barrel, so it should be really easy to clean off. We're gonna run this patch through probably about two or three times. Uh, what I like to do is pull the patch out or unscrew it. I don't like to pull it back in because it brings all that debris back into the receiver, which is what we're trying to get stuff out of there. There you go. Okay. And again, there's little bits of finishing metal still coming off on this because it's brand new. We'll see how well this chrome barrel holds up over time and after we put some rounds through it. Okay, we're going to repeat this probably uh, another two times. So we will let you guys... Skip ahead to the next step, we'll take you right to the next step. So push it from the back to the front. Let that sit and marinate for about five minutes. And then after that, we will clean out the board and we'll show you the next step, so hang tight. All right, again, hopefully everything's in focus here. We've got our bristle brush here. This, If you don't have a bristle brush after this point, you can just do a dry patch and then patch this with oil, but you're really gonna wanna scrub this out and get all the lead out of it and all the fouling. So go ahead and press from the back to the front with your clean rod. Just do this once or twice, and you should be all set to go. We're just gonna press it out through the front. Don't pull back on it. Um, I prefer to unscrew it. I'm gonna run this through one more time, and then we'll move on to the next step. Okay, next step, patch with a drop of oil on it. Go ahead and just kind of twist it a little bit and turn it as you push it down the barrel. That will pick up any debris that are left in the barrel. Again, it's okay. We wanna leave it with a light coat of lubrication in the barrel. Now, if yours comes out fairly clean, like this looks good, this is, this is certainly fine. Uh, we're just going to go ahead and leave it as is. If it's really dirty, run that through again, and then one more patch with a drop of oil on it, and you're going to be all set to go, all right? Okay, fire control group. Just go ahead again, drop oil on a patch, and wipe it out. Let's make sure that all the debris and all the crud's out of here. It's okay if you get a little bit of lubrication on these rails, because really it's either going to be grease or lube, depending on how you lube up your bolt carrier group that's going to get on there. Just go and wipe everything out. What I like to do is uh, press on top of the hammer and then pull back on the trigger and that will release your hammer for you. Oh, safety's on, there we go. It's under tension, so be careful. And then you can wipe out the back side. Now, if you want, you can get some Q-tips down in there and do some fine deal with detail work if you got some mud or sand or grit or debris in there. Again, just make sure everything has the light coat of oil and you're gonna be in pretty good shape. Uh, if you need to brush it out, you can certainly scrub and brush it out. You do as much cleaning as you feel you need to so that the metal is nice and clean. Okay, that looks good. We're gonna go ahead and cock the hammer back down again. All right, and we will move on to our next step. Let's go on to the gas regulator. Oh, you can also wipe out towards the front of the receiver if you want to with your patches. Be careful, these are super sharp down here. Just get your finger down there and wipe it all out. There's gonna be some, probably some oxidized, you know, a little bit of red tint's gonna come out on this, and that's just because this is an area that probably hasn't been lubricated much since it was manufactured. 
wipe off the top in this area right here, and we will go ahead and move on. Okay, also before I forget, up here in this area where your piston rides, go ahead and just wipe that out with a patch too. That could be dirty. Uh, again, go from the front and the back and get that all scrubbed out. A little bit of lubrication in there, not gonna hurt. Okay, so now this next part's gonna be optional, uh, but I highly recommend you do so. So you'll need to move the gas um, regulator down to zero so it's on the bottom. Now, what I recommend you, when you take this off, if you were to twist this tube around at all and put it back on, you're gonna have incorrect gas settings at zero, one, two, and three if you're looking at it just like I am. I saw this in another video. I think it's a good idea to take a very small punch and you're going to just tap a little tiny notch right here. Just, just tap it one time with a hammer and it's gonna leave a little tiny dot there. That dot, make sure you can visibly see it, is gonna match up with your zero, which is gonna be on the bottom where you have your little adjustment lever. Okay, so dot, zero, lever. So when we reassemble it, that little knob is gonna be put back in the correct place. Now to take the knob off, and again, this is really hard to get this in focus because it's so dark. There's now to get that knob off, there's gonna be a little screw up here that we're gonna remove, the knob is gonna come off. We're gonna take care of this gas regulator system before we bottom, bother with the bottom handguard, okay? And also, this is gonna be necessary if you want to do a windage adjustment with the front sight, because the front your front sight tool is gonna to get caught on the sides here unless you have something different, and it's not gonna allow you to move the windage bolt, I guess you could say, moving your little stem, okay? So keep that in mind. All right, so again, little notch on the bottom, make sure it matches up with the zero and we will go ahead and move on. I'm just gonna tap it and we'll see how it works. All right, so I've got a little tiny mark right there towards the bottom that matches up with the zero. You know, you could maybe use a paint marker if you want to, but remember your gun oil is gonna take all that stuff off. So now I know how to match it up properly. All right, let's show you how to get this part disassembled. Okay, I'm not sure how good this is gonna show up in the video, but basically the screw that you're gonna loosen is on setting zero. Okay, so the zero is actually gonna be up at the top now, but the marking is there, so I know how to match it up when I'm done. Use your screwdriver, go ahead and loosen this screw and then you'll be able to pull off this little knob which will allow you to take out the gas regulator and you're gonna need to get that wiped off really well, okay? All right, so go ahead and just use your screwdriver, take that screw out, and we're just gonna set everything down below. There we go, now this is really, this is the first time I've ever done this before. I've seen it on a few videos, a few recommendation videos, but the key here is that you get your knob back in the correct spot and it matches up with the proper hole on the regulator, all right? There we go. Okay, so set that screw off to the side and just pull that knob off the front. Okay, there's my zero, there's my little mark right there. All right, that's all set to go. All right, let's move to the rear. All right, so from your gas block, if you reach in here, there's a little tube that you can pull out. So go ahead and pull that back. Let's see here. There we go. This little end cap right here. Okay, it's got a little swirly pattern to it. Now I'd wipe this off once already and it's already dry again. A lot of the videos say make sure this has adequate lubrication on it so it turns and rotates properly. Um, you know, it's okay to have this coated. You know, when you take it out a couple times, if you start having some fouling issues, uh, that's one of those times where maybe you want to reduce the amount of lubrication that you're using on it. Go and wipe that off nice and good, set that off to the side, and let's go ahead and pull this regulator out. If we can get it out, hopefully. Yeah, she, oh, we gotta take the handguard off. Okay, all right. So at this point, we're gonna go ahead and take the handguard off. All right, my bad. All right, so in order to get the handguard off, it is under a little bit of spring tension. There's a little lever here off to the right. We're gonna have to do that before we can take out the regulator. I forgot about that. So when you pull it forward, you're gonna feel everything shift forward. And that can be the frustrating part about reassembly. You have to pull back with some tension in order to get that lever to lock again. And so that's something you need to watch out for. So pull forward on it, and then just go ahead and pull forward on the lower handguard. It'll come right off. So while we have it off, patch it oil, wipe off the barrel underneath. There we go. Don't really have to wipe out the handguard. There's really not much in there for metal. I think it's just all plastic. Get that nice and clean. There we go, front area. Pull back on this a little bit, okay? Now with this out of the way, you're gonna be able to pull out this little uh, gas regulator, which is right here towards the front. And there we go, there we go, okay. All right, should've thought about that first. So, get this sucker cleaned off. Wipe it off so it's nice and clean so your patches come off nice and clean. Make sure it's got adequate lubrication on the inside and all around the outside. Okay, around the stem, and we will come right back. All right, so we're gonna take you back through uh, reassembly here. One last thing to do real quick before we put it all back together. Again, once you take it out to the range the first time and take a look at it, it'll really have an idea as to what's going on. Again, guys, we're just trying to prevent cycling problems as much as possible, because that's the biggest complaint on this gun, is people don't have the right gas settings or this part gets all mucked up. This wasn't as dirty as I thought it was gonna be. I, it seems like it had been worse from the videos I'd watched, but it's probably a good idea just to take care of it anyway. So again, just wipe that out. Then coat of oil. There we go. Wipe off the front. 
You could take a Q-tip down there if you want to where that hole is where the stem comes out. There we go. Now, reassembly. Um, I've got my mark right here that's going to tell me that's where the uh, zero setting is going to go on my knob. So I'm just going to go ahead and basically it's going to go back as it would before. The little mark is going to be towards the bottom. Go ahead and push this back in. Take your little end piece right here and go ahead and put that back in. This little blunt side is going to go forward in it. That rotates inside the, uh, the gas system. There you go. Make sure it's shoved all the way forward. Okay, so this next part could be just a little bit frustrating, so just make sure you bear with me. We've got the zero on the top, we've got the mark that we made, the two down below, and what we're going to do is we're going to screw the screw all the way through, and this has to be basically lined up perfectly or it isn't going to go, so you might have to fiddle with this a little bit to get it to go all the way down. There we go, just keep going, keep going. Yeah, mine keeps getting caught, so I had to press in just a little bit to get it to seat properly because there's a little bit of spring tension there. There we go. Now she's going in. All right. I'm not pressing on the lever, lever underneath, just kind of pressing back on the regulator stem a little bit here. There we go. Apologies if you hear any snoring in the background. My Corgi is not enjoying this video. He was out like a lamp. All right. Okay, once that stops, we don't overdo it. Go. Okay. Now, just ensure that it does rotate so you can press back on and go and turn it. It's good to go. Yeah, okay. We'll play around with it a little bit once we get the gas tube back in. All right, let's go ahead and put that uh, lower hand guard back on and we'll continue reassembly. All right, so there is a little notch right here and basically your handle's gonna have to come over and lock into place, okay? Now that isn't gonna work until you get this hand guard back all the way. There's a little peg right here in the bottom of the hand guard. There's a little notch, like some little springs right here that hold it into place. And when you put it on, you're gonna have to kind of pull back on it a little bit as you seat it. Here we go. And then as you pull this to the rear, let's see if this works for me the first time. No, okay. We're gonna have to keep pulling back until the handguard is absolutely where it needs to be. Okay, there we go. Really takes a lot of force to pull back on it. That little handle is gonna go right back into place. Okay, now at this point, we will go ahead and put our top gas tube back into position. Now again, this has to be perfectly flat right here in order for the gas tube to go straight down. All right, so I'm going to make sure that this little lever right here is basically as flush as it can be. And again, you might have to wiggle that a little bit as you push down on the top gas tube. So it's going to lock into place right here. Press down into place. It's all set to go. All right, now let's go ahead and move this lever back into position here. All right, so if you cannot press this with your hands back into place to get it to lock, okay, it might have a little bit of trouble going. You've got some options. You can just use your screwdriver and pull it just a little tiny bit just to take some of that tension off as you push down, okay. Now this is really tough, so I'm actually going to just tap it a couple times with the punch. Again, just gently. Now you can put a cleaning patch on there if you want to, just tap a couple times. Okay, and see if you can't finish it off by hand. Now that thing is so freaking tight. And it'll just pop down its little dimple. There we go. It's locked back into place. There's about a, there's a nice cut of metal across the top that's gonna prevent your gas tube from coming out. All right, at this point, why don't we go ahead and get the trunnion greased up and we'll start to continue the reassembly. Okay, so let's go ahead and apply that grease. Now you can use your finger if you want to. You don't need a whole lot. I remember watching the Jim Fuller video. He basically used a pea size amount on all of it. So let's go ahead and start off with the bottom flaps here. Just put a little grease on there. Okay, a little bit right here. There we go, a little bit right here towards the back. All right, a little bit on the uh, stem right here because this will start to work its way into the uh, bull carrier group or into the carrier itself, piston. Okay, now let's go ahead and put a little on the sides here. There we go. Again, you guys correct me on this if I'm doing it wrong. A little bit on these little notches right here. A little bit on the top. Okay. This little peg is going to get just a little dab. Again, it will work itself into the metal. Anytime you see any kind of warm metal, you know that's an area where you probably want to add a little bit of grease. Okay, a little bit right here. There we go. Okay. And then finally some on the sides here, these little wings, and just a little tiny bit towards the top. And really that should basically take care of you. There we go. All right. That's good. Okay, cool. Again, don't overdo it, but this will be the first time we're going out. All right, so that is greased up properly. Again, gloves will really make it much cleaner for you. Now go ahead and take your piston right here and push your bolt carrier group back into place. 
and you're going to want to make this, make sure this is basically flat. This is how it's going to have to go back in. It's just going to be barely, that little notch is barely going to be in the piston. And this way it'll ride back in and lock itself into place. Uh, make sure that you have your extractor at the basically 11 o'clock position from the front. If it is, you're all set to go. And let's go ahead and put this back into the receiver. So you've got some little cutouts back here that you can use to get this to go back into place. You're going to have to kind of push down. It's going to require a little bit of uh, tension because your hammer's pushing back up on it. So you've got your charging handle right there. You've got your um, extractor at the 11 o'clock position. I did put just a little tiny dab of grease across the top of there because that does rub on the inside of the carrier. And then just go ahead and push it forward and it will reseat itself. Now we're not going to test it at all until we get the recoil spring back in. Uh, if you don't see any grease on here after you cycle it a couple times, if you take the cover back off, you might want to put just a little tiny bit of grease on those rails right there. And otherwise, I'm going to see what it looks like after I cycle it a couple times. Go ahead and grab your recoil spring that has this little flap right here that opens up the ejection port, that covers the ejection port. Okay, you're going to go ahead and push that spring back in. It's going to kind of self uh, position itself right at the top of the piston. Now, it's going to be kind of tricky. Uh, you want to kind of hold on to that flap. Okay, make sure it kind of rests over the top as you push forward. There we go. And then push your recoil spring forward so that it locks into place. And you, it's going to lock right back into these little channels right here towards the rear. So hopefully you guys can see that. So you got some little channels right there. This is essentially what you look at. This flap just kind of sits on the top. And it is going to be pressing up against the top cover. For whatever reason, trying to get this cover to snap into place could be not so fun for you. You're just going to have to press down and kind of... Jig a little, little bit until it locks into place. So we're gonna do that. Make sure everything else is out of the way. No spare parts sitting around, always a good sign. Okay, we'll go ahead and press on the back. All right, there you go. Let's give it a good slam and lock into place. All right, now uh, we got the safety off. Let's go ahead and cycle it a few times. Verify it's empty. Go ahead and dry fire. Okay, one more time. It's gritty, it definitely needs to be broken in, but it looks like it's uh, basically ready to go. Okay, so at this point, you could open the cover back up and inspect things and look at the rails if you want to. I think we are all good to go. So let's go ahead and bring it back for just a few final words. Again, after you charge it, always make sure the safety works, okay? Okay, it's good to go. Go and dry fire, and that's it. All right, let's bring it back for a few final words. Okay, last but not least, let's do what the manual tells us to do, which is make sure the entire gun has been wiped off in lubricant, has some oil on it to preserve it. That's what we're going to do while we're talking. I want to thank you all for watching today. Um, again, it's been an adventure. Uh, there's a lot of things I learned about this, taking it apart and putting it back together the first time. Again, in general, a lot of the metal is going to be very, there's going to be a lot of tight parts here going on, so just be patient with it. And, uh, you know, with practice, it will get a little bit easier. Please like and subscribe if you like what you see. We'll be taking this out to the range and testing it with various different uh, types of ammo, with different velocities, maybe run some slugs through it and so on. You know, for $279, bucks, I, I really can't complain so far. Uh, from what I've seen online, as long as the gun is clean and lubricated, it will function for you. Not sure exactly how well it would hold up under harsh conditions, but uh, hey, it is what it is. So this is Travis P11. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe and check out my little podcast that we do called Caliber Corner. Every Saturday morning at 8 a.m. Uh, Central Time, we talk guns and ammo, outdoorsy stuff, prepping, etc. Don't miss out. And uh, thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. Okay, guys. Bye-bye.